but they're going nowhere. So now I've spent a couple of nights in my van, I've suddenly realised I haven't got enough storage space. I was hoping to get away with just this one cupboard up here and using this down here as a hanging wardrobe, a very low wardrobe indeed, but nevertheless, I was going to put a bar across the top underneath the bed and have that as a wardrobe but it's just not going to work I actually need more cupboard space so I've decided to replicate this cupboard up here and put one over here except it's going to be a little bit longer I'm going to have an entire length of this well as long as the timber allow me anyway now my main concern my biggest concern was hitting my head all the time that's why I didn't want to have one that side of the bed but I've tried it out look at this check this out so if I put the pillar here so I'm, up until now I've slept this side obviously but I've realised purely by a bit of luck if I'm laying in bed and I'm suddenly startled and I'll sit up quickly my head actually clears that just about as you can see it literally just about clears it so I'm not worried anymore hopefully fingers crossed as long as I make one of the same dimensions of that as that and put it the other side just as I say that someone starts going at it with a jackhammer anyway nevertheless <laughs> I need to go and be in queue to get some more wood because I'm one bit short on one piece of wood short which is just this one panel across there I've got enough wood in the shed except one piece so I'm off to be in queue now so my first job, apart from taking this picture down, is to hang a piece of batten to the ceiling. This is going to be my hanger. This is what's going to hold the front of the cupboard in place. It's what's going to basically suspend the whole cupboard. or um, well, the front of it anyway, with all the doors. So all the weight of that is going to be on this. So all I need to do is screw this to the ceiling and then the front of the cupboard to that. And this is what I call the hanger. And I'm going to use the cladding in the ceiling as a guide, just like I did this side. And it's two pieces deep at the at the uh, top, which gives me quite a bit of depth at the bottom. Um, so yeah, that's my next job. That's what I'm going to do right now. No will. Now the screws I'm using are these really thick chunky ones because it's weight bearing and I'm screwing directly into the battens that go across my van and I know exactly where they are because the screws in my cladding are telling me exactly where those battens are. But because they're so thick I'm having to drill a pile at first. I don't want to split the wood the other side of my cladding hence the drill <laughs> I know I've got it in the right place because I can feel this drill going into the baton. <laughs> like I say, that ain't going nowhere. Right, there's now a two to do. There you go, simple as that. So now that, my front of my cupboard it's just going to simply screw against that. I'm going to put a bit against the wall again using the same technique, looking at my screws in my cladding 
to let me know where the battens are and screw straight into the battens through the cladding and into the battens and that'll be strong enough I reckon well I must apologize if it's a little bit dark in here the heavens have absolutely opened up it is chucking it down and to think this morning I was standing up standing in a queue outside being queue getting sunburned and this afternoon the weather's crazy right but nevertheless I've managed to get my framework done just in the nick of time now this is my framework as you can see it's a real simple frame it's, it's not difficult to make if I hold that there like that you can just about see the screw holes in the bottom the screws literally go through this like that into this piece here and I've countersunk them about that much because I didn't have any longer screws <laughs> but I made do with what I got there's no way I'm going back to B&Q anyway so this will now bolt, uh, screw through that way into this batten up here and that is how my cupboard is going to be suspended from the ceiling I'm also going to now put a batten across the back of here again screw that to my other battens so it's battens on battens <laughs> and that will create the base of my cupboard really simple really simple way to build a overhead locker I've seen so many people on YouTube build their lockers in their big nice workshops and then bolt them up to the wall that's all well and good if you've got the room but if you haven't got the room and you're building a van on a driveway just like I am then this is definitely the easy way to do it right I'm not gonna be able to get much more done today so uh, time for lunch <laughs> Well, I was forced to abandon the build yesterday because the rain just did not stop. So this is the next day. This is day two of the cupboard build. Now, the first thing I'm going to do today is go and look for some more screws because I must confess, I actually run out. Look, <laughs> I don't think you can see that. <laughs> this is uh, only held in with one screw at each end. So uh, I need to find some more screws. And there's no way I'm going to be in queue just for four more screws because that's all I need. Four more long screws. That's my first job. I have a rummage around, find some screws. Then I'm going to fix this up here like this. And this is just temporarily because I need that there so I can work out where my batten's going to go along the bottom there for the base. And I want to try and get it nice and square. It should be about where this line is, but nevertheless, I still want to fix it in there. I can put my set square against it and work out where that lower batten's gonna go, so that's my next job. So I found me extra screws, and I've put my pilot holes in here. Now all I've got to do is hold it up here. This is a bit of a juggling act. <laughs> really need two people to do this, but um, there's only one of me, so uh, unfortunately. Right, let's try and get this up. Now the thing is, I've got to get this in exactly the right place, so I'm just gonna use my fingers to fill and judge that gap where it's got to go. I reckon about there. So using my trusty set square, I can put it against there like that and see where the bottom batten's going to go. Simple as that really. Mm, must be about right. Will it withstand the bonds test? Yeah, that'd be all right, wouldn't it? Yeah, just about clears me head. Sitting down. Yep. So that's the one thing I don't want to keep banging my head all the time. Because <laughs> I do, I do it a lot. Okay, so now I've put this batten along here. This is going to be the batten. That's, this is going to take the weight of the base of the cupboard. And the, that load is going to be shared with this as well. So the load will be pulling down on here and resting on here all in all makes it quite strong now the inside frame inside of the frame if i hold that like that you should be able to see down this and let me just move you across a bit it started raining again i'm afraid so i've had to shut the door so it might be a little bit darker in here than it was earlier so inside the framework i've added these extra pieces of battens along the bottom let's just hold it up like that so you can see there you go so this is the the bottom edge and I've put these in here as well and these are going to be for the partitions and they're simply just screwed in and again using the same timber this is the same timber as these battens just frames out the inside of the cupboard so now all I need to do moving a little step out of the way is attach this up here like that 
I think can really I can really start building it now. I, now I've got this lip here, this lip here. I can put me base in there, and I can put me sides on there. Ah, oh, but before I do that, I do need to put some battens down the side as well, don't I? Yeah, I need to put some battens down the side and down the inside. But I'm sure I can do that. Oh no, it'd be better to do it beforehand, wouldn't it? Okay, so I've hung my frame up now. Now, it's not quite finished yet, it's probably obvious, because I need a base for it. Now, on the other side, I used my cladding. I cut loads of these strips, loads of off cuts, I had loads of off cuts of cladding, so I thought, why not use it for the other side? And what I did, I cut loads of lengths like this and simply screwed them up underneath, and it looks really nice. I mean, I don't know if you can see that under there, but yeah, it kind of goes with the fan. But the thing is now, cladding is in short supply, right? Because of the current situation. And I've only got a couple of packs of this left and they're only short packs and I need that to make my doors. So I thought I'm gonna save me cladding for later. Um, I've got my plywood. Now this thin plywood I used for inside on that side but on this one I'm going to just use it to go underneath like that. and that's going to fit underneath and by doing this as well I'll get a deeper cupboard it's going to be deeper because I'm not going to line the bottom like I did the other side and it gives me that little bit of depth which means I can get more stuff in there also on the end I'm going to have it out a little bit like this so I'm going to extend this out I'm going to have a little shelf there I'll put a little thing up here to support it a bit. And I thought I'll have a couple of charge sockets up here. And I can use that as a little charging station for my mobile phone and my Kindle and stuff like that. And maybe batteries for my camera. So I can put a little couple, couple of little charge sockets there. Make a nice little shelf, just like I did on the other side, my spy shelf. I'll show you. So I've got my spy shelf on the end there. On this side, I should have a little charging station, just for those little gadgets and that that you can charge with a USB charger. So that's my next job. Bolt this up underneath there. So this is day three now of the overhead locker build. As you can see, I did actually manage to do a little bit more yesterday before the heavens opened up. I've managed to get my base on the bottom now. I've just used three mil plywood and this piece of plywood was actually left over. It was an off cut from when I'd done my back doors. So that was a bit of a result. Um, I'm so glad I didn't throw it away. And I think I've just about got enough cladding to make the doors for this cupboard. That's why I didn't use cladding underneath. I wanted to save as much of the cladding. Because on this side, I actually used cladding underneath and it, it looks really nice, but I'm not gonna go back to B&Q for some more cladding. But I, I have put cladding on the ends there. They, these were really short off cuts that I had. And I actually dug these out of my fire bin bucket, my firewood bucket, I should say. <laughs> so that was a result. I'm glad I didn't burn them. My little shelf is finished there. You can see that's nice and rigid. I don't think I'm gonna to need to put any old bracket underneath. And what I did, I put a screw going through there like that into this piece of timber, which takes up that flex. And I put a little block there to take up the flex at the back and it's surprisingly strong so now the next thing is to paint it but before I paint it I want to take care of these little gaps all right so let's get this in the wood show you what I'm doing because if I don't I'll get told off I know I will people tell me if I don't show everything so that is pretty much it just squirt it in the gap and rub it off and that way I haven't got to rub too much down squirt it and force it in the gap I mean, I could make it all nice and smooth, but I'm not going to do that on this because, like I say, I just want to hide that gap, that's all. I don't mind if it's got a step. Um, yeah, I just want to disguise the gap, as it were. Give it more of a factory finish, even though it's all made by hand. There you go. This works really well. I had a lot of good comments last time I did this. A lot of people were like, wow, what a brilliant idea. So uh, that's why I'm just showing you again for those people that haven't seen that video of when I made this one, or my kitchen counter for that matter. You can see this gap. I'll, I'll take you off the stand. You can see this gap up the back here. You can see how bad it is and how easy it is to disguise these gaps. 
Oh, it's going to be difficult doing this one handed. There you go, look at that gap there. You can see it's a really big, uneven gap, but it's got a bit of filler in there. Go like that, switch it over. There you go, maybe put a bit in the corner as well. As long as you get it in the gap, it's going to disguise that. It'll, once, once I smooth that down with a bit of paper, sandpaper, it will disguise the gap. There you go, there's one there as well. Just squirt it in, force it in the crack. Like that. There you go. And that's all you've got to do. Try and get off as much as possible. It's very difficult doing this one and filming at the same time. <laughs> but there you are, look, you can see the gap's completely gone now. When I paint over that, it's going to completely disguise it and give it more of a neat finish. It won't be so bad. Tidy that one up a bit more. Like I say, I'm not going to try and disguise it completely because the more you put on, the more you have to sand off, and the more you have to sand off, the more mess is going to be inside the van. I'm going to just do that one right up the end. So now my filler is dry, I just want to sand it back a little bit. Now I'm not going to use a sanding block, I'm just going to use a bit of sanding paper, and this is 120 grit. So it's not super smooth, it's not super rough, it's about mid range grit I suppose <laughs> and I'm not going to use a block because if you if I use a block I'm going to lose the grain and I want I want that grain to pop still so when I paint it you can still see the grain underneath just gives it that nice rustic look um, just as I did the other side as well now it is windy so that's working in my favor because as I sand it hopefully the dust is just going to blow straight out of the van but nevertheless I'm still going to use my fly mask it's quite windy so it's good it's good that it's windy Right, so I'm going to do my Steve Austin impersonation again. Hang on, this is a bit loose. paint what have I done with it well it's now day four my paint is dry as you can see and I've started peeling off the masking tape I just wanted to show you this because I left the masking tape on overnight and that was a big mistake because now I can't get it off it really does stick overnight yeah. delivery driver um, so yeah, I just wanted to fill you in on that. A little tip for you. Don't leave your masking tape, especially to freshly painted wood, um, because it does tend to stick overnight. So anyway, I want to carry on taking this masking tape off, and then I'm going to make some doors. I'll show you exactly how I'm going to make these doors. Really simple, really, really simple doors to make. Anybody can do this. Right. I want to carry on taking this tape off now. <laughs> Right, so I took my masking tape off. As you can see, it's all gone now. It's all nice and clean. Although I've got a bit of blue on the white paintwork, it doesn't matter because I'm going to repaint that. But anyway, doors. Now, like I promised, these doors are really simple. Now, the dr the drop of these doors is no mistake. Right, it's not coincidental. Two pieces of cladding put together. Oh, <laughs> find the groove like that. And there you go. Doors, simple, but is the thing on their own, they're not very strong, even if you do glue it together. Well, you could probably get away with it, but it wouldn't be very strong. So, on the back, I put a bit of three mil ply, and this plywood is left over again from when I've done my back doors. So, I glue that piece of ply on the back of there, and then that makes a really nice solid door, and it's super light as well. Here's one I made earlier. There we go, and this is what it's going to end up looking like, as you can see piece of plywood, sandwich on the back, this bit weren't quite long enough but it don't really matter because the hinges are on the outside, like that, and there you go, not bad eh, all we've got to do now is wait for that glue to dry, this is just glued together and the reason I put the hinges on is to hold it all together while it dries, I'll put a couple of little screws there as well, 
So once that glue's dry, I'll remove the hinges, paint them. All right, so I'm going to glue this together and then make another door for the middle one. And I'll show you what it looks like once I've hung them. So now we're on day five of this epic cupboard build. As you can see, it's all coming together now. I've put partitions each side of here. I've repainted all of this because I did have some complaints that the little screw heads look like marks on the screen of your phone and people are trying to scratch the mark off their phone and it's actually the screw heads. So hopefully that will cure that problem. So I've painted my doors. I've also added a little bit of extra there to that one that was a bit short. Um, these ones I had enough plywood for. So let's take a look at what this is going to look like. Let's get the right door. So that door is going to go in there, as you can see. And that's upside down. <laughs> I think that's going to look lovely. Right, so let's put some hinges on here, some hardware, and then hang the door up. Now to fit these doors, to fit the hinges and everything, is really easy as well. I'll bring it down and I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do. When placing these hinges, you simply lay them flat, push that down, and that makes them nice and straight, and it also gets them in the right place. I've already made holes in this one, because I've already fitted them. So we just simply screw these in. These screws are a little bit big actually, but what we do, get a marker pen, make them black there you go easy as that Just let's put all these in place now what I like to do is also drill pilot holes making sure we don't drill through our bed or through our finger like I did when I was fitting the lock safe some of you have asked What's, what, why have I got masking tape around my finger it's because I actually drilled through it hazards of the job I suppose and that is just a little three mil drill if you don't drill a pilot hole with this cladding it does split it does tend to split especially if it's dried out if it's dry you will split the cladding and this one is right in the join there so yeah definitely want to do that so we'll make this screw look black like that, there you go, don't look too bad does it, place that one in there, be a little bit careful, and that is how you fit these hinges, so I'll just do this side, Hey presto, one door. Hinges over. Stay. <laughs> oh, I don't think we need pilot holes with this. Looks good, eh? That's all right because that stops it. Nice. 
Perfect. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> Screw. Oh, love it, absolutely love it. Now I'll need a latch. So now all I've got to do is add one of these turnbuckles to stop it opening. A little bit. Oh, a bit too tight. There you go, one door. Now all I've got to do is the other two. That's brilliant, that. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Right, let's get the other two done. Well, there you go. Take a look at that. Don't they look great? I'm really pleased how they've turned out. Now, there's one thing I'll need to do, and that's get some little springs. These little springs that hold the doors open. I'm not sure where to buy them from. So if you know where to buy them, then please do leave a comment in the comments section below this video. They're like little springs that hold the doors up. I have no idea where to get them, so yeah, help me out. <laughs> well anyway, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget, if you're new to my channel, please do consider subscribing. And by subscribing to my channel, you help me feed a cat, and I've got two, and they're both hungry. Thanks for watching, ta -da for now. Oh, it's a bit tight. It's not going to open. Oh, I can't push it. Oh dear, it's all gone. Oh, yeah.